it, nothing fancy, nothing weird. That one camera angle and it's just going to be me driving up Sony Pass. I've driven down twice today. This will be my third time driving up. We were just playing because it's quiet. We basically have the entire Sony Pass to ourselves. This is such a great road. And if you're in a 4x4, you can actually play a bit because some of the embankments have lots of different ways you can drive it. And I'm basically the only person on Sony Pass right now. Because I cannot see a single other vehicle on here. This is great. Um, I cannot say enough how stoked I am that this car that I built with these hands made it not only to here but up here and is now going up here for the third time. That is a very cool thought to me. Um, I can evidently feel um, the altitude. I find myself um, running out of breath quicker and the car isn't cooling as efficiently as it normally would at lower altitudes and I'm definitely down on a little bit of power like a little bit not, not enough to really feel it under these driving conditions I'm currently in sec sec uh, second gear low range four wheel drive front tires are at 1.6 bar rears are at 1.5 the wind has started to rear its head um, it was quite hot when we went up the first time if you haven't watched that video, go watch it. I forgot my tailgate down. How the hell did I do that? How on earth did I forget my tailgate down? What the hell? Thank goodness I spent the time tracking down the OEM Toyota tailgate straps. Otherwise, I might have had a problem just now. Luckily, those are tough as nails. Not that a seat belt will do you much good, but it's just good practice to wear your seat belt. Unless you're doing a deep water crossing, in which case windows down, seat belt off. But this is not a deep water crossing as you can see from the way that it is. I almost want to say that Sony Pass is more daunting to drive down. Obviously, it's more taxing on your vehicle to go up, but driving down is when you realize how steep it is and how tight the turns actually are because not only are you driving down um, you then sort of are able to look at the horizon to gauge what angle you're at and you're looking down the mountainside so you've got that reference as well because i have been on a few mountain passes this is the first time i'm driving one myself but this is the first time that i've been on a road where i look down and i'm like oh okay this is high this is high up if by some way i fall off I'm dead. There's no coming back. <laughs> uh, and it's definitely not hectic. On a scale from one to five, I'd put it in terms of dirt roads at a four. In terms of four by fouring, like a two or a three. I mean, a Renault Duster can make it up here. A Renault Duster actually went up here earlier today. So there's that. And you don't really need to engage four wheel drive. I mean, I did this in two wheel drive the second time around, um, but I'm cheating because I've got the limited slip diff in the back and I've got these great tires, Pirelli Scorpio uh, MTR. And obviously my tires are aired down a bunch. Um, but many lesser cars, many two wheel drive cars have made it up here. There's a Quantum bus running up and down here as well. So if a Quantum can do it, really what's stopping you if you've got a 4x4? Four the 4x4 is just easy, easier and low range makes it even easier because then you're not as strenuous on your clutch and your drivetrain and your engine. Um, it really takes a large load off your vehicle driving up here in low range. And here is to where we get to one of those spots where you can really use it, take it in a few different ways. Sort of clip this corner here and it turns into a 4x4 obstacle. Not a very challenging one, but a 4x4 obstacle nonetheless. Man, I wish I had like LAS Pro Fender or OME or Tough Dog, whatever. I just wish I had better suspension. I'm still running stock suspension and I've got the Monroe shock absorbers in. With these Hiluxes, basically, you've got two choices you've got the Monroes or the Gabriels. The Gabriels are known to be better for 4x4 ing although they're not as comfortable as the Monroes. The Monroes are also better for on-road driving. I, I, I prefer the Monroes, that's what I run. 
the Monroes are just a better all-round shock, they're more comfortable and you don't really feel any problem with them while driving off-road so yeah but they are a bit more harsh over sudden bumps than the Gabriels would be so that's really the only problem with the Monroes but the main problem here is leaf springs and factory leaf springs that are still sprung to be able to load I believe three quarters of a ton on the back of this thing so there's that and also for anybody rushing to the commentator oh no you've got a big heavy V8 and you've got a big heavy ALB bull bar that really does not make a difference the V8 in this is a one you see it's full aluminium um, it's 20 kilograms heavier than the original 4Y that came in this thing from factory I'm currently in third gear uh, so I'm surprised it's going up so easily. I've done this in second gear the previous two times. Anyways, the one you see is only 20 kilograms heavier than the 4Y that this thing had originally. And the ALP, mine at least, is a non-winch. It is considerably lighter than um, the bull bar and bumper combo that I had on here. Because the non-winch ALP is really much lighter than you would expect it to be. It is not a heavy thing. Oh, a Troopy! A troopy, I love troopies. Troopies are great, but this is a converted thing to be like a bus kind of thing. This is cool. Roof of Africa toys. That's what I said. That thing probably drives up here more than once daily. I, th I think that thing needs a break from Sony Falls. So I think it's tired of it. I think if it, if you were to leave, if it were to pop out of gear, and it's a Toyota because the, the handbrake does work. I don't have to say if the handbrake were to fail. And it were to roll down Sony Pass right now, it would just have muscle memory. It would make all the turns by itself. It will remember. It will know how to do it. That is all that it does. <laughs> we are nearing the top right now, sort of meandering up this mountain. <sighs> I'm kind of sick of driving, so I'm not too saddened by the fact that I'm done with Sony Pass now. But I'm definitely a bit bummed for the adventure to be at an end. Definitely a little bit bummed. I just confused the hell out of the people in that fortune right now. That's also another tourist um, vehicle right there. So that thing, just like the cruiser we just saw. And here's where Sony Pass really does even out a lot. There was another number in front of the three, but some decade has gone and put what's on that sticker? Has gone and put a hot and meat loves. Meat love. A weird sticker on it. But once I pass that board, I'm officially done with Sony Pass until I return. That was Sony Pass, the little no man's land which has the South African Situan border in the middle of it but the border posts are at the bottom and the top so technically you check out of Lesotho, drive up Sani Pass uh, you check out of South Africa, drive up Sani Pass and then you check into Lesotho so for the time being you are no one, no way you have plummeted off of the geographical face of the earth or rather the legal face of the earth I don't know what to say but here's the convoy now I'll join up with them again and then we will finish the Sani Pass trip as you should by having a drink at the highest pub in Africa. You have not completed your Sani Pass pilgrimage until you've done that. And that is that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, leave a comment and please if you would like to subscribe to the channel. Cheers!